and to be confident, stronger than what life throws at me, to be the person my friends need, the foundation for my family. It's time to stand up, I'm done sitting down. It's time to rise up and turn this life around. See, this time, things will be different. The advantage is mine. Well, hello, everyone. It's great to see you. My name is Ben. I'm on staff here at Highlands Church, and I hope you're enjoying our online experience. I hope it's revealing something to you and you're feeling refreshed by engaging. And I would love to invite you one day to our in-person gatherings. We meet uh, on Sundays. It is such a great time getting together. I love that we can watch worship. We can listen to a message about being in the room with people. There's something different about it. And I hope one day, wherever you're watching from, that you would love to come and visit us. We're currently in a series called the advantage, which I am loving because I know that when we live a life with God, when we live a life with the Holy Spirit, there is a distinct mark and a distinct advantage on our life. Now, you know, this advantage that we have, this advantage that we have is not something that is in us. It's not about who we are and what we have, but this advantage is actually who is with us. The advantage is found in who is with us. Now, I'm not much of a big sport fan, but I think we can all agree that it is so fun to win in a game. When you're playing sports, whether it's football, whether it's rugby, whether it's cricket or tennis, it is so much funner to be in a team that is winning. Even more so, I think, when there is someone who is just carrying the team to victory. You just get to sit back, relax, and just watch them cream the other team. It is so fun to watch. And you know, in life, we are in a team with God as well. That is what I mean before when I said the advantage isn't us, it's who's with us. And it's God. He's on the team with us, carrying us to victory. Jesus talked about this in Matthew eleven twenty eight. It says this, Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy to bear. The burden I give you is light. Now, you might have heard this explanation before of what a yoke is, right? We want to look at that and go, well, we ain't talking egg whites here. There's something different that he's referring to. Now, back in the day of, of Jesus and the early disciples, a yoke is something that, yeah, um, a rabbi teacher would carry. And that's what he says, that the yoke I teach, what the, the life I'm giving people is easy and light. And there's that explanation, but a bit more deeper. Remember, Jesus was preaching to people. He was preaching to the everyday people. So he used examples that they would understand. Now, again, I'm not a big fan of sports and I'm also not a farmer, right? I don't know much about that. But what I do know through reading stuff is that a yoke is something that they would have to tie two oxen together to whether we pull the plow, do different things like that. And what it essentially is a yoke is that it would tie two things together. Now, when those two oxen are tied together, they are a team on the same goal. And that's the same thing. We are yoked with Jesus. We are together in life, walking with Him, doing the mission. And the best part about it is He is carrying the heavy load, right? It's not 50-50. Jesus is definitely carrying more of this than enough. He's carrying the weight and we're along the journey with Him. That's what Jesus is referring to when He's talking about carrying heavy burdens. See, sometimes in life we carry around weight that we are not meant to in this life. We worry about things that are out of our control. We try to control the uncontrollable. It's impossible. I'm, I'm sure you've been there. We, we can't control what others say about us. We can't dictate what's going to happen. Um, we can't dictate what others are going through. We can't dictate the decisions that other people make. It, it says in the Psalms, I love this encouragement, give your burdens to the Lord and He will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. He will take care of that. I love that word. He will take care of us. I love that it says there that uh, permit. He won't permit us to fall. He won't let it happen. I love what it says in Psalm 55 verse 22. Give your burdens to the Lord and He will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. Come on, God will take care of us. God will take care of you. And I love that word that they use there that He won't permit it. He won't allow it. God will not allow His team to fail. God won't allow you. God won't allow me to fail. Now, I know you, you might have thought that life before was like, well, Jesus helps me with the spiritual stuff like church and praying. But the other stuff, no, no, that, that's my burden to bear. I, I got to deal with that. I got to deal with my family. I got to deal with my work. I got to do this. I'd love us to have this mindset that everything in life is spiritual. 
Everything in life is spiritual. Instead of looking at problems as, well, that's my problem and that's God's problem. What if we look at it as, no, it's all our problem. Because me and God, remember, we're on a team. You and God, you're on a team. Remember that. You're tied together, that yoke, going together in the same direction. That everything is something that, that we go through together. And that's where we can say that, no, I have an advantage in my family because God, He's carrying the load with me. I have an advantage in my business because God is with me in every meeting, every Excel spreadsheet. Even for you younger people, whether it's a couple shifts a week at KFC, McDonald's or Kmart, or it's that assignment that's already three days late, God wants to be involved in it and God wants to help you succeed at it. Now, this is where the kicker comes in. When we go to, to Jesus, He helps us with everything. He's involved in everything. But what that means is that everything is important. If it's all our burden to bear, then everything is important. See, if you want God's advantage in your life, you're going to get it. You're going to get it and it's going to be awesome. But what it means is you're going to have to work for it too. See, when Jesus before said His yoke is easy, burden is light, He didn't say we do nothing. It's light. There's still something apart for us to play in this. Come on, if you're playing the game and they're carrying, that person is carrying you to victory, but they kick you the ball, you've got to do something with it. See, when Jesus is taking us on this, there's still a part for us to play. I love what it says it's in Colossians 3.23. Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you're working for the Lord rather than people. Come on, even those things that we see not important, God has a plan in that that's going to make a big difference in the world. Titus 2.7 says this, You yourself must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teaching. Now that doesn't sound like we get to sit, sit back, does it? Because whatever we do, God wants us to do it and be the best at it. God wants us to be the top of our game in every little thing we do. And why is that? Because He has a plan. I love what our lead pastor Doug says is that we are God's A plan. He doesn't have a backup. He's chosen you to make a difference in the area of life that you were called to, whether it's your workplace, your family, your friends, your school, your studies, whatever it is, God has called you. He doesn't have a backup plan. He called on us. He's given us the Holy Spirit. He's given us the great commission to go out into the world, go out into our world and make a difference and help people find Jesus. We are His plan. It goes on further in Deuteronomy 26 verse 19, it says this, So He may elevate you far above all the nations that He has made. Then you will live to the praise, fame, and glory of God, and so be a nation that is holy to the Lord your God as He has promised. Come on, God wants to elevate us. Why? So people see Him. So people see that there is a difference, there is an advantage on our lives and go, well, why are you doing so well in your business through COVID? Why are you leading your family so well? Why is your relationship so healthy? And we say, well, it's the advantage that we have. It's God. Everything in our lives should be pointing people closer to Jesus. That's why He wants to team up and help us in everything because it's all an opportunity to help others. Come on, God has given us the advantage to help others. Others, it's not just an advantage of us, but it is for an advantage for them as well. Come on, this is where we remember the point of it all. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, for God so loved you. Come on, Jesus has always cared about you. Being loved by Jesus is not some membership perk you get once you become a Christian, but it's always been there. I love what it says in the Bible where He died for us while we were yet Sinners. While we were still on the other side of the field, we were on the other team, He still chose us. He chose to die for us and He has this amazing plan for us. He's always cared about you. That's why He's given us the Holy Spirit too. As we disciple our friends, as we disciple our families, we lead them closer to Jesus because His heart is for them. He didn't start caring for them once we prayed about it, once we brought it along. His heart has always been for them. And He once again, He's helping us in this way. He's yoked with us as we disciple those and lead those around us. You know, this advantage, it isn't just boldness in us. It's also boldness in others. You know, you aren't just going up to someone blindly and talking to them about Jesus because God has loved them and cared for them and been working on their hearts well before you got there. And I can guarantee you that He's going to be helping grow them and talk to them and love them whenever we leave. His heart is for them. And again, we are doing this with Him. 
You know, the big Holy Spirit moment at the beginning of Acts is a great example of this, of the, the advantage is in us, but it's also in others. I love that um, it says this, Acts 2 verse 2. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. See, the Holy Spirit gave them the boldness to speak. What happened is they, they went, flooded the streets and just started preaching and telling people about Jesus and explaining that love. And that was a boldness given by the Holy Spirit. I don't know, maybe you've had moments like that where you want to talk to someone about Jesus, someone you're discipling, and you feel you don't have the courage, you don't have the words. That's where we can call on the Holy Spirit, the advantage to give us the right thing to say at the right time. But again, that wasn't the only miracle. Let's keep reading. It says this, When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running. This is talking about people in the town, everybody. They were completely amazed. How can this be? They explained. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. See, they're already talking to each other, asking each other, what's happening? Intrigued. The Holy Spirit was pulling on their hearts saying, hey, look at this. There's something interesting going on here. It says this, Peter's words pierced their hearts. And they said to him and the other apostles, what should we do. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized, adding to that church that day about 3,000 in all. Come on, what a miracle of the Holy Spirit. The advantage right there that not only were they given the boldness to speak, the right words to say, but there was a crowd who were listening and hungry. Why? Because those are God's children that He cares about and He's been working in their hearts. And it wasn't just Peter out there that day. It was Peter and the Holy Spirit. It was Peter and Jesus together, yoked together, helping people find Jesus. The advantage of He was bold to speak, but man, they were bold to listen as well. God was working in their hearts. Come on, when you go to work this week, you go to school this week, go back to your studies, your family this week, ask for that advantage. Ask for the same advantage that the Holy Spirit can work through you, give you the right words to say, the right opportunities, the right moments to speak. Work with the Holy Spirit. Start to see where He's moving, where He's wanting you to be. Ask for the situations where you can stand up as well. You know, there's not a single conversation I go into where I'm not asking the Holy Spirit to be with me because I would much rather He be present and helping me help others than just me on my own because I know He can bring those circumstances that would never happen. But He's working in their hearts as well. Come on, discipleship, it isn't meant to be hard. Come on, what have you got to lose? God is on your team and He wants you to win. He's carrying the heavy load, but there's still a part for us to do. He's going to do an amazing work, but there takes a moment we need to step out and say, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to follow your prompting. The advantage is there and we've got to start to believe and step in faith in it too. Come on, there is no plan B. You are it for your workplace. You are it for your family and God would have it no other way. Well, I'm going to pray for you guys right now. Wherever you're watching from, why don't you close your eyes? God, thank you that you believe in us, even when we don't believe in ourselves. Come on, Holy Spirit, I pray that right now, eyes are being open to the opportunities around them, whether it be workplaces, friends, family, people that, that we can show the advantage to in our lives, in our workplaces, God. Come on, I pray, start to speak to us on those moments. Show us where to go, what to say. Give us those divine interventions. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're working in every heart, that your heart is for all your lost children to come home. And thank you that we are a part of that plan as well. God, for people who haven't experienced your advantage before, I just pray that they can start to talk to you and start to hear from you and start to see just little by little what life looks like living with you. Oh, Jesus, we thank you for all you do and all you've done. In your name, amen. Well, thanks again for joining us today. Uh, we just had a great message from our youth pastor, Ben Thompson. I hope you loved it. Make sure you jot him some love in the comments section there as well. But talking about the advantage, Ben, thanks mm. so much for sharing nice. with us today. You have fun? Yep, it's good. Love, love it. First online one. Oh, so nailed good. it. Good job. Well, let's ask a few more questions mm. to go a bit further yeah. into what you do is what we do, uh, which is exciting. People seem to be loving it, mm. which is cool. And hear a little bit more on a couple of the points that you yep. were making there. And maybe you can explain expand on them a little mm. bit more for us. Uh, there's one part there where you're talking about that we are on mission or we're tired, mm. yoked with Jesus. 
uh, that we're on a mission with him and really God does most of the heavy lifting in this yeah. and if we're honest sometimes it feels like we are <laughs> but really there's a lot yeah. more going on um, but there is more at it than just letting him carry the team mm, yeah we have a part to play mm. can you tell us a little bit more about that the part that we might have to play in when we're on mission with jesus yeah definitely i think of the the old statement whereas you know god won't give you what you can't handle mm. i don't necessarily agree with that i think it's more god won't give you what you don't need yeah, and right. i think so often we're praying for faith like oh give me the faith to do this give me the faith to do this and god's saying well no take a step first yeah. like you know peter didn't have the the skill mm. of walking on water until he took a step first. Yeah. And I think that's Good. our part to play is, uh, I use the example of sports teams before where someone can be carrying us, they're killing it, but if they kick us the ball, we still have to do something. Yeah. And I think in all these opportunities, these moments that it's exactly that, mm. is that we've got to take the first step. You know, yeah. we're not going to lead someone to Jesus if we don't even talk to them. Mm. Or, you know, if we stay in our small environment, we stay in my cubicle at work, I don't talk yeah. to anyone else. It's going to be very hard to have moments to talk to people like Jesus yeah. or in your friend group. You've got to expand it if we're comfy with, you know, the five people in my small group. We've got to take that step of, oh, okay, well, I've got to ask someone to join or oh, I've got to initiate conversation or maybe mm. I should peer over the fence and have a chat with my neighbor, create the opportunities for the Holy Spirit to move. Yeah. Awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, I've just written another one here. Hmm. Is you talking about how God might direct us. Yeah. Gives us direction and helps us forward there and moving in different kind of situations that we find ourselves in. And sometimes those are dramatic and something, mm. but I find most of the time they're really subtle. Yeah. You wouldn't notice unless you're looking or asking mm. God for it. It's fair enough. But uh, we all, we know that God wants to see people know Him, see people saved and set free mm. and living on purpose and for a purpose. But how can we make sure that for everyone at home mm. and for all of us that we don't miss out on those those moments that yeah. God is setting up for us that we might be able to disciple others and help other people mm. know Him. Because I reckon there's, we get a lot of opportunities, yeah. but we might not always seize the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it starts with praying. It starts with those moments just like, God, just direct me. God, open my eyes to cool. see. And I, I think when we have just that, that moment with, with the Holy Spirit saying, just, just show me what's happening, I think our eyes are opened mm -hmm. a little bit more. Like I know for me, I'll never go into a conversation with a friend, a coffee, just without asking the Holy Spirit to be present. Yep. Like, just show me. And so many moments like that, I, I see that they'll initiate the conversation mm. or they'll bring up church. Yep. Like I remember from years ago, discipling someone who was not a Christian at all, was very anti-Christianity, yep. but somehow was friends with me and liked talking about computer games and stuff. And I just pick them up. We'd go get food. I'd just be friendly, but I'd always ask the Holy Spirit to be yep. present. And yep. in moments like that, it'd always be like, oh, hey, tell me, how was church on the weekend? Yeah, how cool. was youth? How yeah. was that? I'm like, why do you care? Care about this yeah. but the holy spirit was was leading something there yeah. so it's just keeping our, our eyes open for it and expecting the holy spirit to move those divine intervention moments i reckon yeah for sure that's kind of a very anticipative as yeah. well like you're praying and asking god because you're expecting and anticipating mm. that yeah there will be an opportunity absolutely and i think i think that's great advice mm. and prayer should be anticipative not just reactive or talking in god's direction yeah so that's awesome. But I love how you, you are making the thing here of going, there is an advantage and we still have to take the advantage. Yep. We, are, we have a part to play. Yep. I think that's super important. Mm. Great that you, you're talking about that and teaching us about yeah. that. So thanks heaps, Ben. No worries. Great. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our service today, uh, that you've learned something, you're mm. growing in some way, or it's given you something to discuss in your small group or around the dinner table or just in your journal or just within yourself as well, that you're growing closer to God. Thanks so much for being a part of our online community. But as I said, if you're with Within the region of Toowoomba or Dolby or Highfields, I'd love to invite you in person yeah. to come uh, and meet with us and see what Highlands is like in person because I always say it's, it's better in the yeah, room. Definitely. I love online, but we'd love to meet and connect with mm. you and help you grow in life as well. Uh, if you're not, if you're around the place, let us know where you are and we'd love to help connect you with other like-minded people that you can continue to grow as well. But thanks so much for being with us. We love you. We're praying for you. Hope you have a great day and a great week. We'll see you next week online. Bye.